what am I doing? I actually don't know. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and I honestly thought I was going to be coming on here to tell you exactly what I'm reading this week because I have had this week planned for a while of what I want to read. Except now I don't know because it's me and I can't make up my mind. <laughs> so we're going to talk through the different options that I will be reading this week. I do actually have eight days off work so I'm very excited about that. So for the rest of this weekly reading vlog it's just going to be days off. We do have YALK which is the Young Adult Literature Convention. That's on Saturday. I'm very excited to go to it so I will be doing hopefully a whole separate video just for that because I'm expecting to have lots of fun there. We're going to turn it into a whole thing and probably a book haul at the end of that because that's going to be great but apart from Saturday all the other days I'll be doing my usual updates and stuff for. Do I have anything else planned for the week? I don't think so. If you've watched last week's vlog you would know that my back's been bothering me. I don't know what I've done to it. Tomorrow I've actually got a video consultation with a physio therapist person and that's through work which is amazing so I'm gonna have that video consultation hopefully get an appointment soon so I'm not sure I don't want to make any set plans just in case they have to change because I'm going to physio so we're gonna see what happens there hoping that this gets sorted like this is really bothering me but it does mean that I'm not doing loads so I do plan on reading loads over the next few days I've got back into Animal Crossing so we're gonna be doing more of that I'm really enjoying playing that of an evening and just chilling to it it's so much fun I do want to get some filming done so I can can start getting prepared for the fact that I'm away at the end of the month and just all these little things just getting it all sorted the things that I want to read I actually got very excited because we have a kindle book that I'm really excited to read I've been getting back into kindle book I'm having a great time last week's kindle book fantastic absolutely loved it honestly the week before that I think I never read another really good kindle book I need to start writing these down otherwise I'm gonna forget which books I've read I haven't been updating my goodreads I haven't been updating my reading journal like what am I doing I actually don't know but yeah I read a kindle book last week which I really enjoyed and then today I discovered another book series that I'm really excited by it is a cozy mystery I don't know if it's murder mystery but it is a cozy mystery let me get up the synopsis let me see if it's on my kindle it is about cats though I'm so excited to say that it's about cats sometimes you just need a book with talking animals in like I love that honestly that goes actually back to my childhood of my favorite book as a child actually even as a teen to be fair was a book that's called warrior cats that's about talking cats like I loved it absolutely loved it the number two feline detective agency by Mandy Morton I'm gonna do the synopsis because it actually sounds so good it sounds absolutely fantastic I'm so excited for it I really hope I like it because it's a 13 long series so far and there's like special ones for Halloween Christmas so I think it's gonna be super cute I don't know if I have to read them in order because if I don't have to read them in order I'm definitely going to read the Christmas one at Christmas but anyway here we go Hattie Bagshot has bitten off more than any cat could chew no sooner has she launched her number two feline detective agency than she's thrown into her first case fur cross home for senior cats has a nasty spate of body snatching and three former residents have been stolen from their graves. Hattie and her sidekick Tilly set out to reveal the terrible truth. It just sounds so good. It actually sounds absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. Sorry, the lighting's gone really dark. I forget we're in pretty much winter now. It's only half past four of an evening and it's gone hella dark let me see if I can brighten this just a tiny bit okay I don't think this is going to make much of a difference so we'll just get through this fast because my camera battery is also flashing so that is the cozy mystery book I'm going to be reading this week I'm so excited for it so that's my kindle because I've realized I just want to have a kindle book on me at all times if I like it I'm probably going to get physical copies and get all 13 books because I'm so excited for it and then the physical book this is what I'm stuck between what I was going to read honestly maybe we need to put a light on because please something with the light in that's not helping hang on that's rather orange oh but that's like dark okay like this is not helping we're just gonna roll with it okay we're now we're now in orange light because the only light that i have is more of a warmer ambience so we're just gonna roll with it but at least you can actually see the book covers now the book i thought i was going to be reading this week is the labyrinth's heart by m a carrick this is the third book in the rick and rose trilogy and yes i love the fact that we actually have book three on the damn spine orbit 
does it well. Other publishers need to get back on this because like we need that in books. Anyway, third book in the Rick and Rose trilogy. I absolutely love this trilogy. It's a fantasy series. You've seen me talking about it in October's wrap up and just a weekly vlog because I read book two in October and book one in September. So I really do want to get to book three. However, I was thinking about it and I'm like, I have eight days off work. So should I not tackle a book that I think is probably going to take me longer than I think it will? Which is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, especially because because this edition the writing is absolutely tiny although to be fair the same can be said for the fantasy book but I feel like the fantasy book is going to be easier to read and I'm pretty sure again the kindle book's pretty cheap at the minute so I might do this on kindle and physical and maybe do that next week when I'm back at work for a few days and then read this this week because I'm not at work so I'm not going to be tired or busy or having to do things and I feel like next week me trying to read this or potentially taking it on holiday I just feel like I don't know if I'm gonna get into it or not I don't know oh what am I doing I don't know I actually don't know because I had everything planned out for November because I like to do that I like to try and plan my week which I don't know why I do it because the whole point of November is not to have a set TBR but I am feeling the mystery so I think I'm gonna go with this one and then we'll leave this one for next week uh, potentially or even on holiday or the week after I come back from holiday who actually knows I do want to read it in November but just apparently not right now because I'm not in the fantasy mood I think because I've already read a fantasy book and A Study and Drowning is another book that I'm in the middle of that I need to read this week A Study and Drowning by Ava Reed. I started last week I am up to chapter 9 page 157 I also want to finish this and this has a bit of fantasy in it because we have fairies I would say it's more folklore than actual fantasy because it has that element to it I don't want to pair it with a fantasy book I'm not feeling that so I feel like having a cat mystery a study in drowning and a woman in white sounds like a really nice mix and it's a nice like mixture of vibes as well so I can pick up what I'm in the mood for but let's talk about this one because it's what I held up first so this is a classic mystery gothic book I've been told I'm really gonna like this I've put this book off for like two years now I'm gonna be reading it I really want to read it so this is what we're gonna do but a study in drowning by Ava Reed I'm really enjoying this I said it last week but it really reminds me of a dark version of Emily Wilde's encyclopedia of fairies I really like that Ava Reed's one is a lot darker we're following Effie and Effie is an architecture student she doesn't want to be an architecture student she actually got amazing grades enough to get into the literature college however women are not allowed into the literature college because they are women and so cannot of course critically analyze anything and they can't write anything good because they are women and so Effie has to go for the second best college which is the architecture college but she really doesn't like it she's not interested in architecture and she's also had a very bad altercation with her professor her like supervisor to the point where everyone in the college knows about it and then paints her as the one that well she allowed this to happen so she, clearly she was asking for it and stuff and it's awful it's not in graphic detail of what's happened instead you're seeing Effie remember like snippets here and there like she clearly doesn't want to remember you're just seeing her fear and the things that she's connecting back to that but it is obvious what has happened it's just not explicit on the page and it's really difficult so you've got Effie who's dealing with that and then she also deals with a mother who is not interested in her at all Effie has always had really bad nightmares dreaming of a fairy king she also sees things from the fairy worlds where the doctor and her mother are like they're just hallucinations and so the way they're dealing with it is here we're gonna throw your pills now go off and don't bother me and it's really horrible because you just see how alone Effie is and she becomes enamored by this author called Mirrodin who writes poetry and about the fairy king and she gets an invitation to go to the author's house that is fallen into disrepair to come up with a plan on how to kind of save this house so come up with an architectural plan for the house and so she goes and things are going from there we do have a little bit of a rivals lovers thing going on I wouldn't say it's enemies to lovers I would definitely say it's more academic rivals it's mainly on Effie's part than anything else like her rival hasn't done anything he's actually a nice guy he's just like I'm just searching for the truth whatever the truth is Effie is very different in the fact that she focuses a lot on his race because her country and his country are at war with one another and he's like actually I'm mixed race so why are you being so horrible to me like she then starts realizing actually why am I doing this why am I being this way and it's because she's so jealous of the fact that he is in the literature college and he doesn't even believe in her favorite author like she 
he believes that he is a fraud and so she's so upset with this and so she uses anything she can as ammunition against him but she does start to slowly change which is good I like seeing that I like seeing a character that we have with flaws like they are not perfect he is jealous and she is fed up all of these things but I really like it like I say it's a darker read so yeah so I want to read more of this my only thing about this book is the chapters are so long they're like 30 pages long there are little breaks in the chapter which is good but I have been reading the slow and the reason for that you'd have seen last week's vlog because I got completely sidetracked. I am enjoying this so I want to continue on with this. I want to read the cute cat mystery and I also would like to at least start The Woman in White. That's the reading plans for this week. I honestly thought it was going to be a completely different set of reading plans but we're just going with the flow. I hope you're all doing really really well. I'm sorry this intro was so long and rambly. I've just got back from work and my back is hurting me and I'm just like in a chatty mood as well and it's not helping but yeah I hope you're all doing really really well. Let me know what you've been up to and what you're reading and let's get on with this weekly reading vlog. Good evening. I have had a really nice relaxing day, which has been great. Spent the time with my partners and I did start a book, but I'm thinking of putting it down. Like I'm not actually loving it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go to Study and Drown. And I've read a little bit more. Honestly, I'm reading this so slowly. I'm up to chapter 13, page 258. And I am enjoying this book. Like I've said that quite a few times. I am reconsidering what I said about it being a darker version of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Only because in that book fairies are real they are an accepted part of the reality and Emily is compiling an encyclopedia the world's first encyclopedia about fairies which is what takes us to this remote place where she then is trying to find this particular type of fairies to finish up her encyclopedia and she has her rival lover situation going on this book I feel like it's a darker version of that just because there are fairies mentioned in here but she is considered, I wouldn't say mad, but definitely she's not believed about fairies being real. And we have this author that's written about them, but they're like, that doesn't mean that they're real. It's just a work of fiction and that's it. But Effie wholeheartedly believes that they are real. Because Emily Wells' Encyclopedia is it's a lot more academic in terms of we're researching about the fairies you don't get that you do get little snippets of folklore here and there but it's not as deep but you do get the rival academic lover situation thing going on so I think maybe not quite as like if you're really looking for a book about fairies and the academic side of things this is not that and even as a dark academia book I don't think it is one we don't really have any information about the studying side of things. If anything, this is just more of an obsession over an author and trying to find out whether the author is a fraud or not. Which in that sense, yes, you have that obsession, but so far it's not leading them down any questionable decisions, which I normally associate with dark academia. I wouldn't say it's got the dark academic setting because this is not taking place in a college. Although we do talk about things that have happened while she was at college and those are darker in nature, I don't think this quite sits 
as dark academia. So I don't know, I feel like it's kind of a hard one to place. I just feel like this is a young adult, slightly horror book that's just got really good gothic vibes and atmosphere and that's it. I don't think it sits under a subcategory of dark academia. So yeah, it's, it's one that I am enjoying. I am finding it a bit slower to get through. Some of the things that we were uncovering about the author are disturbing and is really upsetting Effie and it's making her think about her own experiences that she's had with men and the way that none of that has been good and I like that, I like the fact that we are exploring that in a young adult book and it's handled very aptly because it's for a young adult audience and so it's not anything explicit on the page and nothing like that, it's all just there so you know what you're reading but it's nothing explicit and I just feel like it's a really interesting way that Ava Reed manages to do that with her writing, like her writing is very atmospheric, very beautiful, has this way of having a sense of unease throughout everything without there being anything explicit, like it's all in the vibe, which is really good, like I'm really really enjoying it. At the start I kind of hoped it was going to be more we're going to find out fairies are real and we're going to start studying them and so that's why I was thinking it's a more darker version of Emily Wilde's but it's not because we don't have that academic study of fairies, we don't really have an academic study of anything apart from finding out whether this author was a fraud or not, which we're kind of learning through like different letters and things that they're trying to find and it's just a really creepy house and everything going on. So dark atmospheric book, not academic, so I don't feel like dark academia works for it, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. I would like to say to you I'm gonna finish it this evening because I've got about 120 pages left to go, but I also know that I've been averaging around 40 to 50 pages, so that probably won't happen. I haven't yet started the Kindle book, although I am looking forward to picking this up. I think I'm kind of more saving this for days where I'm a bit more busy in terms of like traveling, so Friday I've got a physio appointment, taking my Kindle to that, and then obviously we've got Yelk, so I'll definitely be taking a Kindle book with me because I plan on buying books when I'm there, so I don't want to be bringing my own book with me. So I think that's going to be towards the end of the week. I did, however, today start The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, and I'm I'm not loving it. I'm up to page 54, chapter 8 of the first section, because it looks like it's broken down into sections. Now the very first page I really really like. I thought it was really really well written and I found it really intriguing, the premise of it all. So it starts off with, this is the story of what a woman's patience can endure and what a man's resolution can achieve. Talks about how the law is still in certain inevitable cases the pre-engaged servant of the long purse. So people will take money to change the results of things. And it goes on to say how this is going to be an account of what should have been the judge and trial case and a look at what had happened and we're going to present to you everyone that was involved in the case as if you are the judge. And I like that concept. I also really liked this first page to the point where I was underlining things because I thought it was really interesting. However, as I've gone on, I haven't been loving it which is a shame and I haven't even read much but it's also taken me a long time to read which I did expect because the writing is so tiny in this edition but I don't know I'm just not loving it so we have met the woman in white but we're seeing it from the perspective of this artist who goes around teaching students how to draw before schools were a big thing you would hire tutors he is an art tutor and he comes across the woman in white when he is going home one day very late and it's on a kind of country lane into London. He comes across this woman that's all dressed in white and she doesn't give much of herself away, he doesn't know her name, She doesn't. he doesn't know where she's come from, but he helps her into London, helps her get a cab to where she needs to go. And then shortly after she departs, he then sees these two men that are arriving in a cab, by cab I mean the horse-drawn carriages, coming upon a police officer and saying, hey, have you seen a woman in white? And the police officer's like, no, I haven't seen anyone like that. Why? What's happened? And they're like, she's escaped from an asylum. Which is really interesting, except we then just kind of carry on to this person that goes to this house that is going to be teaching these two children. The guardian of these two um, young ladies seems a bit weird and unusual. I think for me it's not so much the story or the plotline of this, it's the writing style. I'm really not enjoying the way Wilkie Collins writes. There is a lot of description in this book and I'm not enjoying the way he writes description. It just doesn't connect with me at all. It's a lot of focus on things like women not being smart enough to 
properly study things and them being very frivolous creatures. It's a lot of like focus on being ugly, how certain things make a woman look ugly and how they should be like soft-spoken and do this in certain ways to be more attractive. I don't like it and as much as I know a lot of people can say well it's the time that it was written, I get that. I've read a lot of classics, I really like classics, I don't like the way this is written. Like I'm really not enjoying it. So I don't want to say I'm gonna DNF it because I would like to read this because I do think it's very interesting. I want to learn more about the woman in white, I want to know her name, I want to know what's happened, I want to know what caused her to try and escape from this asylum, what caused her to be put in there in the first place. Like I want to know all of that but I also really don't like this writing style so it's gonna take me a while to get through it. I think I, this is gonna be one that I dip in and out of and pick up as and when I'm feeling like it but it's going to be slow and I'm hoping it's just a slow start and then it will really pick up and I'll really enjoy it because like I say I like the idea of the premise of this book and just not enjoying the execution so far so instead we're going to swap that out for a different book and I'm th really feeling The Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels by Janice Hallett. I'm really really feeling this book like I don't know why but this is all I was thinking about. When I was reading that I was like you know what I think I'd just rather be reading this. So I think that's what I'm going to do. This one was gifted to me by Naomi so thank you Naomi and this was on my radar because of Christina and Christina really liked this book and I think it's going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. This one is a bit of like how a young girl was caught up in this cult that was trying to convince her that her baby is the antichrist she had to like kill him people interrupted so that never actually happened and now we have these two journalists reporters that are now looking into the case because the said baby is now 18 years old and so they can actually like reopen and look into all of this and maybe they're finding out that actually what everyone thought happened didn't actually happen. I'm really excited to read this. I actually kind of want to read this more than I want to read to study and drown in. So I might do that tonight actually. I might just start this because I do want to read a study and drown in and I will read more of it but I'm really in the mood to read this and the whole point of not having a TBR for these last couple months is for me to mood read and read whatever I feel like reading. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna read this. What I plan on doing this today though with the last bit of this evening is one, I've got to cook some food. No idea what I'm cooking yet, so we'll just have a look and see what I can throw together. I want to go through my shelves because I normally keep a notion list of all the books that I have to read on my shelves, but I've been finding it's inaccurate and I'm not sure what's happened. So I want to re-go through all the shelves, all the books that I need to read and update my notion list and also do a bit of film prep. The notebook that I have for all of my videos ideas is at work and I'm not at work and I'm going to be filming some of the December videos soon so I need to try and remember some of that. So I'm thinking do more of an organisation bit, then cook food, play some more Animal Crossing and read Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels. That is what I'm looking forward to. Bit of a chaotic one this week because I keep changing my mind of what I feel like reading but we at least have a plan for this evening so let's get on and do all of that this evening. A decent read in time over the last couple of days but before we get into that I just have to talk about the terrifying experience that I had last night it was terrifying massive wasp I, I mean massive it was like this big it was huge just came out of nowhere in my room out of nowhere I don't know where it came from it just suddenly was there the cat ran for cover it was dreadful but what was more weird was the fact that at the time, I had literally just caught a wasp in Animal Crossing and then a wasp appeared in my room. It's November. What the hell was a wasp doing out and about? I don't know. It was some weird shenanigans going on last night. I was definitely freaked out. We had everyone involved trying to catch the damn thing. It was a hard time, but it was resolved. So that was good. And then I had to re-relax to be able to go to bed because literally I was thinking okay I'm just going to shake my last trees and then I'm going to go to bed nice and easy and then this massive ass wasp comes out of nowhere and I'm like wow 
<laughs> oh, we're not sleeping. That's not happening, not while this thing's in my room. And then once it was gone, I still had to try and calm down from everything that had happened. It was terrifying, but it's fine. You know, it was definitely an experience that I didn't expect to have. But okay, let's go on to the reading stuff because we got quite a bit done. So I actually finished Study and Drowning yesterday. This was the only thing I read yesterday and I'm really pleased that I've actually finished it. It was really good. I really enjoyed the writing style, but I stand by what I said. Like, I don't think this book is a dark academia book. It does comment on academia, so I can understand it from that perspective, but not much of this book is actually set during the colleges. As much as they are sort of studying, it's more that they're kind of being detectives to uncover the truth about Meridian, this fabled author, and realising the dreadful truth about it all really and the heartbreaking truth. I liked it, it was a little bit predictable, I liked what was done with the fairy king in terms of what he represented and I think that was done really well. It's not a darker version of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, like as I, as I already mentioned I don't think it really is that because there isn't enough of the fairy folklore in here to warrant that. It doesn't have an, anywhere near as much academia study as Emily Wilde's does either. So I feel like this is a bit of an odd one to place but I just think it works as a young adult gothic book that tackles some really hard-hitting themes but done in a really good way and like I say the way it's kind of explored through using the fairy king I think is really good. I like the metaphor that that all represented and I liked the comments about academia but I don't think it's proper dark academia book so I mean if you've seen the dark academia deep dive video that I did then you'd know I've kind of got sub oh, subcategories of what dark academia is and maybe this is more kind of dark academia adjacent rather than actual dark academia like it's got the vibes it's got the darker setting I can see why it would be seen as dark academia by some people, but I also think it's been slightly mismarketed. But perfect for autumn. I think autumn is a great season to read this book and it has got those darker gothic vibes with Ava Reed's beautiful writing. So it was an interesting one. I liked it. I'm glad I finished it. It was definitely a slow read, but I also feel like it worked by reading it slowly. And then the other book I have started is The Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels, and I am up to part two. This is page 73. This is really easy to read. The whole book is done in emails, WhatsApp messages, transcript. There's no description in this book, like none. We're literally just hearing about this tale about the Appleton Angels and the different people that were involved at the time. But because we're at the very start of this, we have our main character. Is it Amanda? Yes, Amanda, who is approached to doing a novel based on the events that happened, but from the perspective of the baby. Now the fact that the baby is 18 years old. And so you see her starting to try and send out emails and feelers to get information about the case that happened from people at the time. You see some things that she gets rejected over and it's a really interesting look to see how that's all being done. Like how do you go about getting all this information? How do you go about investigating this for a crew try- crew crime? No, a true crime Book. So that is interesting. It's just, it's different to what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting at least like some descriptions and stuff, but you don't really get that. The only descriptions you get is when Amanda is interviewing people. So like we've had interviews with a couple of police officers at the time that some of the arrests were made. And so you're getting their descriptions of what they saw, but none of it's like detailed. It's really unusual. I don't know, I'm enjoying it. It's a completely different format. I don't think I've ever read a book that's fully formatted this way. Definitely had murder mystery books where those formats are included but never had one where it's a sole thing so it's kind of weird because I'm kind of like normally I'd want to try and solve it alongside everyone but I don't really know how to do that I can definitely see things that like inconsistencies and stuff Amanda talks to her editor and goes this is the problem we're getting inconsistencies so I feel like there's no real subtle mystery solving in this case because it's all kind of being laid out for us because we're getting the information at the same time as Amanda which does make it interesting because you're learning it all at the same time. I don't know it's just a weird I think it's just a different format I've never had anything like it but it is interesting and it is a quick read because of that. I don't know how I feel about it fully I think the case is very interesting because we do have this cult this group of people that believe they are actual angels so very kind of like Midnight is the Darkest Hour where you have that evangelical Christians and so you have that 
that going on and it results in this mass death which some people are ruling as suicide some people are like well maybe they were actually murdered and stuff like there's weird stuff going on basically and a baby is at the center of all of this it's interesting we have had one person be arrested for all these things but we don't actually know what's going on they refuse to talk amanda is also working with oliver who is a rival who is also working on a book from the baby's perspective until they kind of come to an agreement where they work on two different things with this case because there's enough to go around. So that's interesting seeing their dynamic, seeing their rivalry and then their eventual reluctance having to work together because that's what their editors smoothed out. So yeah I'm, I'm just intrigued to see where this is all gonna go. The whole book being done in this format is really interesting for me and I think I'm either gonna really get on with it or I'm gonna find at the ending and be like oh it was okay maybe the formatting didn't work for me. I'm not sure. At the minute I find it interesting and it feels like a bit of a novelty read because I haven't read anything where it's been like that fully. I mean, Dracula is all letters and journal entries, but that feels different to this. Which was a weird comparison to make. But anyway, yeah, so I'm liking it. It's interesting, and I'm looking forward to continuing on with this. Now that I've finished The Study and Drowning, this will be the book that I focus on at home of an evening time. And I will be starting my ebook today because, as I mentioned, pretty sure I've already mentioned it in this vlog, I'm going off to physio today. So I'll be taking that with me because of the travel is like an hour and a bit anyway, so that's going to be a couple of hours worth of reading in. I'm looking forward to starting that. And then and tomorrow we're off to Yao. I'm so excited for this cat mystery book. I think it's going to be really fun and cute or at least that's what I'm hoping. So hopefully the next time you see me I would have finished The Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels and also the cat mystery book and hopefully they're all going to be amazing reads. Right I've got lots of filming to do before I head off to physio so I'm going to get on and do that and I'll catch up with you Monday. evening i wasn't planning on updating today but i had an amazing time at yelk which will be in a separate video haven't quite worked out on the timings of all of that i think it just depends how it goes with editing things as to when it's all going to go up but i had a really good time i hope you enjoyed that video it's always a bit of a random one doing that because it's a little bits of b-roll and then just like a massive haul at the end of all the bits that i got but hopefully you like it anyway but what i actually wanted to come on and talk about is books. Yesterday I did do some mince pies which were really tasty and I enjoyed doing those. I felt like the one sweet thing that I'm actually semi-decent at doing and mainly because there's nothing I need to do. It's, it's just ready-made puff pastry and a jar of mince. I put nutmeg on it this time which was a nice little addition. I might try honey next time. Also I had my physio. I've got tape on my pack that's got to stay on for a few days. I've been told that I can't do certain things. At least I'm now getting the help that I need to try and set on my back. It's aggravated at the minute because I just had a day at Yelka and of course I bought a couple things. Not as much because of the bat. I still got a few things. Anyway, no, what I wanted to talk to you about is the Kindle. So at the very start of this vlog I was talking about the fact that I was very, very, very excited to read the number two feline detective agency. I DNF'd it. Uh, I feel, I feel such disappointment in saying that because I was so excited for this but I just I just couldn't get on with it and it didn't even bother me that we're following cats because obviously I love that and it didn't bother me that the cats have mobile phones that they can pick up pens and you know they drive and they do all these things like that, that doesn't bother me what bothered me was the writing style of it I just could not 
get into it which is such a shame because I feel like it would be a very silly mystery a and it is like it's very very silly tongue-in-cheek humor but I just couldn't get on with it I tried and I just gave up I was just like, I'm, I'm really not enjoying this it was a shame I had all the markers for what was going to be a really good book thing that I would enjoy and you know the fact that it was the start of a 13 book series I thought it was going to be so much fun but it just it just didn't work that's a shame but never mind. Instead, I changed to a different ebook, and oh my god, I am loving this. I am reading The Very Secret Society of Witches, and this is by Sangu Mandana. I'm probably butchering that name. I'm so sorry. I've not heard it said out loud, so I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I should have checked that first but I was a bit too excited for the update. But I'm now up to chapter 12 and I am loving this so much. It is so fun and heartwarming and in all honesty I was not sure if I was gonna like this. I got it because it's on Kindle Unlimited at the minute and I thought why not just give it a try. It can't be bad. Loads of people like it and I thought it's on Kindle Unlimited. Why well, just just try it. I've enjoyed it so much I got the physical copy today at Yelp. It was so I'm just, I'm loving this. It is so, so heartwarming. So we're following Mika Moon and Mika Moon is a witch and she has been brought up her whole life being told that witches cannot band together. That is too dangerous. Magic becomes too unstable. And you know, obviously we can't have normal people knowing about witches. But then Mika Moon has started making YouTube videos about being a witch, which Primrose, the kind of head witch in this little society that meet up every three months, is very against this. She's like, this is ridiculous. And Mika's like, but nobody actually believes you. Nobody believes that you're actually a witch on YouTube. You just make videos of it and stuff. And Mika loves doing it. It's a way to be herself without anyone knowing that she's being herself. Like she doesn't have to pretend, but they don't necessarily know that. It's really nice. But Primrose is very much against it. And what happens is someone sees her video and then emails her wanting her to come and tutor three young witches. So Mika goes to see what's all this about because this doesn't seem right. Lo and behold, there are three young witches in need of a tutor and she's like I don't know if I'll be any good but I'll try and it is a grumpy sunshine romance as well which is why I wasn't sure if I'd like this because I'm not a massive romance reader like I'm really not and I say that and then I read books like this and I'm like but maybe I am because I also really enjoyed Magnolia Parks which is a contemporary romance series and I've also like really I mean I enjoy Serie de Mars which is basically fantasy romance so I feel like I'm I'm fussy with it but I do like it I just haven't quite accepted that yet but yeah so we have a grumpy sunshine romance. Mika is the sunshine and our grumpy is a librarian called Jamie who really does not want Mika to be there. It is so cute and fun and wholesome and there are so many quotes and I was reading it on my Kindle and I was highlighting things and so when I saw a copy because I was thinking to myself on my way going to Yelp today I'm gonna have to eventually get a copy of this book when I feel like rereading it because I can easily annotate it like there are funny moments there's relatable moments there's just beautiful heartfelt comments like there's lots of different things that I could pull from this and it'd be really nice and then I saw it on the table at Yelp <laughs> and I was like wait a minute <laughs> I got it and I'm really enjoying it and it's so cute and I know a few of you've already read this so you already know this I'm just late to the show but yes I am gonna finish reading it on Kindle because that's where I've started but I cannot wait to annotate this it's gonna be so much fun it's just it's really good and I don't know why I didn't think that I would like it or like I thought it would be okay I didn't think I wouldn't like it but I didn't think it would be anything amazing like I didn't feel like it would stick with me I just feel like it would be okay you know an easy read but it's so lovely I really like this this is very good and then in other book news I did read more of of the Appleton Angels and I'm now up to page 148. Now there are no proper chapters in this either so I just kind of stop when we change format. There's lots of things going on in this. It's definitely getting more mysterious. There's been a few things where I'm like, hmm, that doesn't make sense and, you know, possible theories and stuff. It's one of those ones that I really enjoy it when I read it. When I start picking it up, I don't want to put it down and it's so easy to read. Like, it's so quick because of the formatting, which I know I've probably said like a million times. But also once I've put it down and like I pick up something else, like reading this, I'm, I'm kind of more wanting to get back to this than Appleton Angel. But I'm not sure if that's because I'm still 
all kind of early on like I'm not even halfway through yet and I feel like this is can get really really interesting but I think it's the formatting I'm not sure if I'm loving having the formatting be like this the whole time and having no actual descriptions or things going on although I think my favorite character in here is actually Ellie Ellie is it Ellie yes Ellie Cooper she transcribes things for Amanda and I think she's hilarious which we've only gotten to know her in the little brackets that she does with the transcribing but it's brilliant they're amazing one-liners and I actually love it so Ellie's my favorite character and the rest of this I'm just kind of trying to piece things together with Oliver he seems a little bit unusual he's definitely got some stuff going on in his past there's a weird thing that someone keeps calling him really early hours in the morning he's also starting I feel like he's gonna become enraptured with the person that's in jail for what happened with this case some of the things he's saying and I, I think that's the path he's going down so I feel like he's gonna fall under whatever cult thing is going on for me my interest is peaked because none of the testimonies match up like they're all different and you just don't know what's going on on why everyone has something different to say and none of it's really making any sense and so I'm intrigued to find out what is going on and I think probably it's going to be the ending that makes me go wow this was really really good. I like it, it's a quick read, but I think out of the two I kind of want to prioritise finishing The Secret Society of Regular Witches so this might go into next week because I'm busy tomorrow. I'm with my sister all day tomorrow which I'm pretty sure I've already told you this so I don't imagine I'm going to be reading much and if I'm going to be finishing one book gonna be this one but we'll see you never know I could get it all done anyway I'm gonna go now my back's sore I'm tired I want a hot drink and I actually need to start editing the video for Yelk straight away because I've still got the reset video to finish filming and I've got to get that edited. I need to finish this vlog and get that edited and then next week I need to do next week's vlog and try and edit that as I go so that when I go on holiday you have all your usual videos and I don't have to bring my laptop and edit on holiday. So it's a busy few days because I'm back to work on Wednesday as well so I've only really got the next few days to do it all in which obviously I can't do for the vlog, but next week's vlog, I mean. Yeah, it's a busy few days and I'm taking tomorrow out to spend some time with my sister because we haven't spent a day together in absolutely ages. Yeah, I should probably do it now, although I'm really tired and I kind of just want a nap instead, but I should just get on and edit. But I also just want to nap and read Secret Society of Witches. Let's stop rambling, do that hot drink. Scratch that thought. I have book mail. I was expecting this actually, I just kind of forgot. But it's the new locked library book. Honestly, it's been a day of getting new books. As I said in the video for you book box subscriptions don't count. Let's see, what is this book gonna be? I don't know, I managed to not get spoiled for most of these. Ooh, they're pretty. This is The Gilded Crown. Every life comes at a price, and this is by Marianne Gordon. Let's see, what are the end papers saying? They're nice. So we've just carried on that design round onto the edges and under the dust jacket is where the magic happens. Ooh, that's pretty. That's very nice. Still doesn't be every exquisite thing in my opinion. That book was delightful. What is this about? Okay, so it's a start of a series. It's book one in the Raven's Trade series. The first time Helliver visited death, she was 10 years old. Since she was a little girl, Helliver has been able to raise the dead. Every creature can be saved for a price, a price demanded by the shrouded figure who rules the afterlife, who takes a little more from Helliver with each soul she resurrects. Such a gift can rarely remain a secret. When Princess Sullivan, sole heir to the kingdom's throne, is assassinated, the queen summons Helliver to demand she bring back her granddaughter. But once is not enough. The killers might strike again. The princess's death would cause a civil war, and so the queen commands that Helliver remain by her side. But Sullivan is no easy woman to be bound to, and even as Helliver begins to fall in love with her, with the threat of war looming, Helliver must trade more and more of herself to keep the princess alive, and death will always take what he is owed. Hmm, not bad. I like the idea of that. That actually sounds pretty good. Locked Library had a whole section at Yelk as well, but obviously I have all of their books. Like, I've been with those subscriptions since it started, so there was, there was nothing there for me. Beautiful always gorgeous and I am intrigued by this one I feel like it's going to be interesting it kind of I was a bit worried when I started reading it about the death part because of Belladonna I really didn't like Belladonna so as long as this book is better than Belladonna we're winning in my opinion Belladonna different premise but we have someone that can interact with death she can't die which is an interesting one whereas this is actually someone resurrecting the dead which sounds really cool but yeah okay now I'm gonna go do that hot drink and I'll see you probably Monday to wrap this up It 
is time to wrap up this vlog. A day later than what I thought it would be. I really tried to finish The Mysterious Case of the Apple Turner Angels but I didn't quite manage it and it is time to wrap this vlog up. So I managed to get to part four, page 241. So I'm just over halfway through and it's a very easy read because of the formatting. But because of the formatting, I am not loving this book, which is a shame because I feel like there is a lot of promise. So it starts off, and I really like the premise of this. I think it's really interesting. It starts off with, you have a key that opens a safe deposit box. Inside is a bundle of documents, archived research material for a book that has just been published. You must read it all and make a decision. Either replace the documents and the box, then throw the key where it will never be found, or take everything to the police. All of this is just the documents that you find. And so for that, it works really well. However, as myself and just my personal read and taste, I am not loving this. Like I feel like the parts that were transcribed could have been actual scenes where you actually have Amanda sitting down at the restaurant, at the place, wherever they're going to actually talk with these people. So you actually get a little bit more and you can really feel for them. And I know th the idea of this is to have the transcript so that, well, you're coming into it as someone that is removed from this case. You don't know these people outside of these documents and you have to try and make up your own mind about what is going on. I just don't like it. And I feel like because of the way it's done, I don't know these characters. Like I don't know what they look like. I have no idea of the things that they like they don't like how they're reacting to things, their personal thought. I don't like Amanda as a character from what I can see from the way that she's acting. She's really quite harsh, she likes to use people, the way that she's treating Oliver I feel like she's kind of pushing him towards the direction that he's going in which is not a very stable one and I don't know I just don't like it and I, because I don't have her inner thoughts I can't see her reasoning behind all of this to do all of this. I, I feel like it's very interesting I am curious to see what is going on with this case although at the minute it's all a bit of a mess and it's very much like supernatural side of things and I'm like I don't don't really believe it's this like I thought we weren't actually having actual supernatural stuff going on but the way it's all being pushed and that I'm like are we really doing this to make it sound that way and at the end of this we're gonna go oh so we don't actually know what happened you just got to try and make it up for yourself which is fine but also I don't know I think I'm just really tired of not having description being able to connect to the characters in this I mean I do like it when I'm reading it it's really really easy to read it is super fast paced the way it's formatted makes it a really quick read and you are just cutting straight to the points that are relevant to this case although I would say there's a few things in here that I'm like but that's not really relevant to the case because it's a made up series that had nothing to do with these angels they just used the events to inspire these weird and wacky productions that we seem to have in here why because that's not actually to do with the case like they even admit right at the start of the book we didn't talk to anyone that was involved in that case so it's like well it's not really relevant but it's in there so uh, i don't know i don't know how i feel about it i i don't are we gonna finish it because i do like it and i'm really hoping that the ending's really gonna surprise me which is why i was trying to finish it all for this vlog so i can be like oh i really like this ending or actually you know what i don't think the ending the payoff was worth it looking on goodreads reviews all the goodreads reviews are really really high like they everyone seems to really love this book there's an occasional one where they don't get on with it and that's mainly because of the formatting everyone else seems to really love this book and obviously christina really liked it that's the reason why it was on my wish list i think i just need more from my books than just transcripts and emails and whatsapp messages but i will be finishing this this will go into next week's vlog and i will finish it and i am i do want to know what's going on i also just feel like I want to rip out all the bits that are waffle to me and get to the actual core of what's going on. Saying that though, we do have books that I finished this week. Did finish The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which I have been saying the title wrong all the time because I keep saying it without the irregular bit and that's because in the book Mika calls the group of witches that they meet up with once a quarter the very secret society of witches and not irregular witches and that phrase is used quite a lot so that's what stuck in my mind and then I just kept missaying this title but apart from that this has been a fantastic book I've really enjoyed it I have 
loved being able to connect with Mika as a character. There's just been so much in this book that I know that when I read it physically, I am going to annotate this so much because of how much I could connect to this character. Mika being 30 is also lovely because I'm 30 and it's really nice to see a character that is my age and still doesn't really know what the heck they're doing. They're just kind of winging it, they're just kind of floating from place to place and the things that she struggles with are things that I can very easily connect to and I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really good, really heartwarming. I liked the way it ended. I guess like one or two things but some things I had no idea. It was really fun. I really really enjoyed this one. It was exactly what I needed without me realising that's what I needed. But yeah, I, I really loved this one. I'm really pleased it was on Kindle Unlimited because I probably wouldn't have picked it up otherwise even though I have had a few of you saying how good this is. I just I just wouldn't but it is. It was great. I loved it. It's definitely been the highlight of the reading week. It's been so good. I could not put it down so yeah loved this and then of course I finished a study in Drownum which I did take a bit of time reading this one and I did like it. It is a young adult gothic book that tackles darker topics and uses the fairy king as a metaphor to do this with and I liked that. I am a little bit disappointed that it's not a darker version of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies like I hoped it was but that is my own expectation being put onto it and I feel like the start of the novel is a bit more like that and then as you go on they kind of deviate. Obviously as I've already mentioned Emily Wilde's is a academia more more like light academia focuses a lot more on that whereas this one I feel like has a little elements of academia in it and commentary to make on academia but the characters themselves don't partake in that much of it or at least Effie doesn't. I liked it still, I think it was really good, I think I had the wrong expectations on this book but it was still a really good one and I still really like Ava Reed's writing and I still think it's worth picking up. And then my DNF for the week which is The Woman in White and I'm really in two minds whether I'm going to carry on with this one because it's not the plot that I don't like it's the writing style. If this was a writing style that I liked I could then push through and read it even if the plot wasn't amazing because I'm like it's worth it for the writing. However I have a plot that I'm really intrigued in but a writing style I really don't like and that's normally a recipe for me not to finish a book. I don't know you're gonna have to let me know if you've read this one whether you think it's worth it whether the descriptions the way things are written gets better but as for now I'm gonna put this down I've got lots of other things I want to be reading so I'm gonna focus on those and then I'll see what you say about it if you think it's worth it then I'll try and pick it back up again maybe in January but for now I'm gonna put this one down which is a shame because again I had high hopes for this I feel like that's what this has been like I've had high hopes for a lot of the stuff that I'm reading and then it's not quite followed through and then the book that I didn't have high hopes for has been amazing. So it's been a weird chaotic reading week to be quite honest. We are done. We are at the end. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please let me know what you've been up to, what you've been reading, if you have read any of these and your thoughts on them. Okay we're gonna leave it there. So I think for this one we're going to have to leave a witch emoji, cauldron or something witchy in the comments below for this one because this is definitely in the highlight of the week. I have loved this so much and we're gonna go. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.